What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to talk about something in python that is going to be mainly interesting for beginners becoming more intermediate in the python language and this is the counter class now the counter class is something that can replace dictionaries because a lot of beginners use dictionaries for counting and I do so myself even a couple of times uh, when I forget about the existence of counters. And today's video I want to show you how counters work and why you should use them instead of dictionaries for counting. Um, so first of all in order to use counters we need to import them and for that we type from collections import counter. Now this is part of the core Python stack, you don't need to install anything. We're also going to make use of random so that we can generate some random data. So import random is useful. And let's talk about a basic scenario. Let's say you have a list of possible objects. So we're going to call this object list. And uh, you know that there are objects with a label A, with a label B, with a label C, with a label D, and with a label E, for example. You know, these object types exist and then you have an API, for example, you want to have the next object and the next object and you don't know what it's going to give you, but you want to count it. So you want to count what kind of uh, objects it, it gives you over time. So what you can do is you can say, for example, for um, just counter in range 100, we're going to get a couple of random values. So we can say print random choice object list. Now in reality, of course, those are not random. Those are going to be some some values provided by an API. And you can see we get them, we get 100 of them. And we want to know, okay, how often did we get an A? How often did we get a B and so on? We don't want to necessarily store them. We just want to have the counts. So what we can do is we can use a dictionary to do that. We can say DCT equals empty dictionary. And then what we do is we say essentially, okay, uh, we would have to initialize first of all for all the objects. So to start with zero, we would have to say for object in object list. We would have to say the dictionary entry for that object starts with zero. So we initialize and then every time we say dictionary random dot choice of the object list plus equals one. Or maybe to make it a little bit uh, easier to read, we get whatever we get. So uh, received object is whatever we get from the randomness or from the API. So random choice object list. And for this, we want to have an entry in a dictionary uh, that is increased by one every time we encounter one. And in the end, we're going to have uh, the occurrences. So we can say print dict. And then we see, okay, A was sent 21 times, B 19 times, C 21 times, and so on. Um, so this works, but you can see it's kind of tedious. You need to initialize and all that. With a counter, this is way easier. With a counter, what you do is you say counter equals counter, like that. And you don't need to initialize anything. You can just skip that part and you can just do it like that. So you can, you can omit the initialization <clears throat> like that. So this works. This does not work with a dictionary. So if I change this again to a dictionary, this will not work because it doesn't know the key B in this case. So it doesn't work. We need to initialize it or we use a counter. But this is not the only thing that a counter can do, which is better than um, than a dictionary. Um, also, one thing that I want to mention here that I cannot show you here today because I'm using Python 3.9. From Python 3.10 onwards, we can use counter.total to get the sum. So we can just type uh, print counter.total and this will give us the sum of all the um, all the individual counts. But as of right now in Python 3.9, it doesn't work yet. Or it doesn't work in Python 3.9, it works in Python 3.10. Um, and besides that, what we can do now is we can... We can go ahead now and instead of getting them from an API, let's say we have a collection. Let's say we have a list of occurrences. We're going to call this occurrences. And this is going to be just random dot choices. And we're going to choose from the object list and K is going to be 100. So we're going to choose 100 objects. And this is going to give us a random list like that. So we don't get them step by step. We have a list and now we want to use a dictionary or a counter to count from that list the occurrences of the 
individual uh, object types. So what we can do in a dictionary is we can again say dictionary is going to be an empty dictionary. We then say for object in object list. We want to initialize it again with zero. Um, and, and, and then we, we can basically say, okay, again, count uh, basically what we did before. Now, what we can do with a counter here is even better than what we did before. We can just go ahead and say counter equals counter and we can pass the occurrences and we can print the counter object here. So this works, this does not work with a dictionary. We could try to do some dictionary comprehension, uh, whatever, but essentially this is how you can do it with a counter. You don't need the whole initialization, iteration stuff. You can just create it in the constructor. You pass um, the string if you have a list of words. So you, you can also pass, like if you have a sentence, you can split on the white spaces. You can take the individual words, pass no counter, and it counts the words. This is something that I do uh, or I did um, a couple of days ago in a uh, natural language processing uh, project or site, site exercise that I did. So this can be quite useful. Also, we have certain functions with counters that we do not have um, with dictionaries. So let's say we have a dictionary. Let's just implement this real quick again. Dictionary, empty dictionary for object in object list. Dictionary object initialized with zero. And then for occurrence in occurrences dictionary occurrence plus equals one like that. So we can see that the result is going to be the same, but we cannot use the functions that the counter provides to us. So they are the same. They're just having a different order. So here we have uh, a random order here. We have ABCDE uh, doesn't really matter. The values are the same, but what I can now do with a counter, and this is actually what I used uh, in, in a project a couple of days ago, um, is we can use the most common function. So we can say counter dot most underscore common, and we will get the most common occurrences here as a list. And the interesting thing here is that we can specify, um, we can specify also a range. So we can say, okay, give me the two most common, uh, the two most common objects that we found there. And I can do that with up until two, up until n, up until just give me the most common one. So I can just say, okay, give me index zero. I cannot do that with a dictionary. If I want to do that with a dictionary, I would have to do uh, some complicated structure. So I would have to go and say uh, max value that I have found up until now is negative one. And this is just for the first one, by the way, this is just to find the one most common element. Uh, max key would be none. And then I would have to say for key value in dictionary dot items. And then essentially, if the value of the current item is larger than the max value, then set the max value to value and set the max key to key. And then I can print the max key and the max value. So you can see this works, but it's more complicated here. I can just call the most common function. <clears throat> now, one thing also that I want to show you is you cannot subtract dictionaries from each other. So you cannot just go ahead and subtract one dictionary from another one. You cannot go ahead and say, um, if I already have a dictionary, let's call this D1 is going to have A3, B5, and C4, for example, and then I have D2, where I have um, A being one, B being two, and C being one as well, for example, I cannot just go ahead and say print D1 minus D2, because that is going to give me a type error. I don't have that operand to use on two dictionaries. However, if I do the same thing with a counter, so if I go ahead now and I say, C1 equals counter, A equals three, B equals five, C equals four. Then counter two is one, two, one, like that. Then I copy that and then I change this to C. And then I delete this so the program doesn't crash. Then you can see this works. 
So this works because 3 minus 1 is 2. As you can see here in the A, 5 minus 2 is 3 and 4 minus 1 is 3 as well. So this works with a counter, it doesn't work um, with a dictionary. And one last thing I want to show you here that you can do with a counter is you can also go ahead and create a counter like we did right now. So counter equals counter, then we can set A to 200, or actually let's, let's do 20, B to 15, and C to, I don't know, 12 or something, and then we can print the collection that looks like that. So we can say sorted counter dot elements, and then we get the list. Now we don't have to sort it, we can also use list, but we need to use something that converts into a list. Uh, because otherwise, um, we just get what was it an iterator or a generator or something like that. We get iter tools dot chain. So we cannot see it actually we need to typecast this into a list. But this is just something I want to show you, you can use a counter instead of a dictionary if you would use a dictionary primarily for counting. Of course, you cannot always use a counter instead of a dictionary because a dictionary can have different purposes as well. But if you want to use a dictionary to just count certain things, you should use a counter because it has some uh, specific functions and it's just optimized for that. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and...